Right, I'm off to the Great War. They say it's going to be over before Christmas, so I'll see you soon. Wake up, Brian. Wake up, Brian. Uh, uh, it's dinner time. <laughs> Did the chef die? <laughs> yes, Brian. <laughs> you might have thought that this was actual footage from World War One. It's not. I built a trench in my backyard so I could share with you what life was like in the trenches. I'm Brian Pilchard, and I love history. Using my skills in effects, clothes, and disguises, I'm gonna take you on a journey back in time for an adventure in super history! 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 history. After the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand Ferdinand, suck on this! and the escalation of diplomatic and military threats amongst the major European powers, war breaks out. Germany faces fighting on two fronts, so initiates the Schlieffen Plan. Whatever you do, don't use the Schlieffen Plan! It doesn't work! The war of movement came to a halt by 1915. Both sides had dug in. In general, the German trenches were nicer than the Allied trenches. This was because the Allies never thought they'd be there for long. Sir, should we put a bit more effort into this trench? No, nah, should be fine. We're not going to be here for long. You've been saying that for years, sir. Little did they know this would be a war of attrition. You know, putting on this outfit and feeling the weight of it, the materials, really makes you imagine what it was like for those young men. Trenches were dug 10 to 12 feet deep and in zigzags to minimise damage and casualties from blasts. What? <laughs> you know, putting on this outfit and feeling the weight of it, the materials, really makes you imagine what it would have been like for those young men. There was a front line which was connected to support trenches by smaller communication trenches. These trenches were in need of constant repair. This is a fake gun. It's lighter and it's made of a different material. But you could imagine it being heavier and made of something else. And then you could imagine what it would have been like for those young men. The trenches had shelters called dugouts. The dugouts in the front line were shallower than the ones further back. The ones further back risked being bombed more than the ones at the front. This was because the artillery didn't want to risk bombing their own side. Wearing this outfit, feeling the weight of it and the materials, and standing in this knee-high bucket of water, really makes me imagine what it was like to be those young lads. The rain caused all sorts of problems. Trenches being flooded up to knee level was common, but wasn't restricted to the waist and chest level. Luckily for the soldiers at Gallipoli, they didn't have to deal with this problem. Oh yeah, we're having a great time here. The freezing mud caused the condition called trench foot, sometimes resulting in the amputation of the soldiers' feet. The soldiers also had to stand guard when the trenches froze over. Some soldiers commented, at least it wasn't mud. As the war went on, people's kit changed due to the conditions. The Germans' leather helmets were replaced with steel. Officers got rid of their swords as they were easy targets for snipers. And now we have Private Thompson with his 1908 webbing gear. 
As you can see, Lieutenant Nelson, we've got the new Weber equipment here. It carries uh, 150 rounds. That's plenty, enough for the whole war. Um, and as you can see from the straps, leather isn't in vogue anymore. Plenty of room here for your bayonet, your entrenching tool, and any other accessories to show off for the boys. Fantastic. That looks brilliant. That looks like something you could have around the house after the war. Yeah, and if you're in a bit of a handyman, you can keep all your tools in it. Sorry, what was that? If you're a bit of a handyman, you can keep all your tools in it. <laughs> you could. You could. You could keep your tools in it. It does look very snazzy. Is there a, is there a version for the officers? No, no, these are just for the other ranks, just for the boys. <laughs> well, well, we'll just have to be demoted if we want to look that good. <laughs> and we also have here the brand new Tommy helmets. Oh, wow. That's brilliant. That looks like it could stop a few bullets. Uh, no, no. Um, just shrapnel. If you got shot with this, your head would splat like a melon. Fantastic. That looks brilliant. That looks like something you could have around the house after the war. And in terms of fashion, you can wear the strap in front of the chin, behind the head, or you can take it clean off. And I was talking to Tommy earlier and he prefers it behind the head. You know, maybe during the week, you want to wear it under your chin and, and then behind the back of your head at the end of the week, if you're feeling like uh, it's going to be a bit of a, a fry a instead of a fried day in the trenches. <laughs> And it's a bit of a medieval design. What was that? It's a bit of a medieval design. <laughs> it is too. It is too. It does look a bit medieval. And uh, it looks so good. It's Maybe it's something you want to wear around the house after the war. Violence. A lot of it happened in no man's land. No Man's Land was the space in between the two opposing trenches. When leaving the trench into No Man's Land, this was known as going over the top. Going over the top could refer to a range of different actions. It mainly referred to patrols, but also to trench raids and large-scale attacks. The aim of the patrols was to sneak up on the enemy trenches and get information. What did they say back there? Dunno, forgot. And they were speaking German. It was questionable how useful this activity was. The aim of the trench raids was to perform a surprise attack and gather information. Well, what did we get? Fashion magazine, some biscuits and a joke book. Didn't know the Germans had a sense of humour. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's one of ours that we got back. It was questionable how useful this activity was. The aim of the large-scale attacks was to gain land and potentially finish the war. Well, what did we get? Well, you know that last thing we did where we got the fashion magazine, the biscuits and the joke book? Yeah. Well, none of that, but this time the whole platoon was wiped out. Up until 1918, it was questionable how useful this activity was. There were plenty of weapons to get killed with, including melee weapons, guns, bombs, artillery, but in no man's land, barbed wire combined with machine guns were king. There were also new weapons, such as aeroplanes, tanks, and chemical warfare. Oh, here's a new product. Have a whiff of this. This is the latest mustard gas. It's a sweet aroma with hints of uh, almost like a bonbon filled with soap and perfume. Yeah, it's a, it's a very sweet aroma. Um, you know, it's sort of like something you could have uh, around your house even after the war. <laughs> <laughs> the deadly mustard gas mainly attacked the eyes, skin and lungs. Before proper gas masks were developed to neutralise the chlorine, urine-soaked pads were attached to the nose and mouth. No, I'm not doing that. I'll stand in a bucket of water, not putting a piss rag on my face. To give this video a sense of legitimacy, we've got in an expert on photogrammetry. 
So, can you tell us a bit about the process? Sure I can. Photogrammetry is the extrapolation of data from a 2D image. Also, if you want a 2D image 3D, BAM! If you want a 3D image 4D, BAM BAM! If you want a 4D image 5D, maybe not. Wow! So you actually do that? Oh no, somebody else does all that. We, we just take photos. Great! This green screen here is not going to be green in the final product. I'm going to get rid of the green and I'm going to put us in a scene like the lots of guns scene in The Matrix. Unfortunately, the bodies of the dead were left where they fell. Whilst new trenches were dug, the rotting corpses were exposed. The food scraps and the corpses attracted rats. Mm. Oh. What a lovely looking piece of cheese! These rats carried diseases that got the soldiers sick and out of action for months. In some instances, the soldiers died from their bites. The rats would bite the wounded and crawl all over the soldiers when they slept. One of the upsides to the rats was that they provided entertainment for the bored troops. <laughs> so it's the end of the video and now you're going to reveal to us all your work on the photogrammetry. Yeah, we've been uh, really working hard on this one. Axe to the grinder, lots of hours in the studio, burning the midnight oil at both ends and uh, I've actually been sleeping on a couch for the past month. Have a look at this. Oh! Oh! oh wow! <laughs> Looks... It's like an actual trench from World War I. Yep, yep, you wouldn't believe what we can achieve with photogrammetry. Wow! It, it really adds something to the video, doesn't oh. it? Makes the video, mate. Makes it. Wow! Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help us produce these videos and get more people in to do photogrammetry, then become a patron of the channel. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Unbelievable. <laughs> Cheers for that. Thanks for helping with the video. Oi! Oi! Stu McConaughey's the name and history's the game. I just saw your video about World War I life in the trenches and it was bloody shit. Not once did you mention the soldier's diet of 20 ounces of bread or 16 ounces of flour, 3 ounces of cheese, some tea, jam, salt, pepper, mustard, possibly fresh vegetables, or lime, rum, a maximum of 20 ounces of tobacco, third ounce of chocolate, four ounces of oatmeal instead of bread, a pint of porter instead of rum, four ounces of dried fruit instead of jam, four ounces of butter, margarine, two ounces of dried vegetables, and it was very hard to get hot meals to the front line, almost impossible. And for the Germans, 26 and a half ounces of bread, or 17 and a half ounces of field biscuits, or 14 ounces of egg biscuit, 53 ounces of potatoes, four and a half ounces of vegetables, two ounces of dried vegetables, the list goes on. Not to mention McConaughey stew, which was a tin stew, which the soldiers may or may not have stew liked. McConaughey's it had mixed reviews, but I quite like it. I know this is very frank, but I'm prepared to lose friends over it. Thanks for the information. If you've got any sources, we can publish it. 